Hi guys, welcome back to Rockpreneur. I'm CJ and today we are going to be taking these amazing guitars and making them sound and play awesome. Turn it up. You're on the Rockpreneur YouTube channel. I was actually able to buy my dream guitar. This guy right here. This is my Taylor K24 CE. This is a very nice all Koa Wood electric acoustic guitar. As you can see, this Koa Wood guitar just has this beautiful wood grain around the edges. I mean, it's just incredible, incredible craftsmanship. The only problem with this guitar is that it does not play very well at all. Look how far I have to push down for this chord to work. That's a long way. I'm straining, my hand is straining to hold this thing down. Oh my goodness. It should be a little bit, but that's way too much. I mean, it's just not fun to play when it's that high. Just brutal, so we need to get that fixed. This guitar that retailed for over $5,000 after taxes, it should play like a $5,000 guitar. And right now it plays like a $100 guitar. In addition to this guitar, I have this vintage beauty here, which I believe is from the 1970s. It's a 1974 maybe? but I'm not, I'm not sure of exactly the year. This is my stepfather, Joe's guitar, and it is a very nice sounding guitar as well, but it unfortunately suffers from a very similar case. These are really beautiful guitars, and I really would like to see them play the way they look. Gosh, look at that. Mmm. All right. Time to take them in. We're gonna take these to a local guy here in town and get these things set up so that they play like they're supposed to. I have got my Taylor K24 CE back from the Luthier. Unfortunately, I have some bad news and some good news. The bad news is the Epiphone is not going to get fixed. Unfortunately, just with age, this top has actually collapsed down and the braces inside are, um, they're, they're basically broken off the, the top and the sides of the guitar. So in order to fix this thing, Alistair would have had to have taken off the neck, he, which in, on this guitar is not easy to do. He would have had to potentially even replace the truss rod because I, maybe have stripped it out when I was trying to adjust it. Um, and he would even have to go inside here and replace the bracing or reinstall it, I don't know. But basically he said this job could get upwards of $1,500. And this guitar is only worth about 300. Sometimes a guitar isn't worth saving. Do you really wanna spend $1,500 to get that thing back into playing condition? I mean, eh, you know, you could buy a pretty nice guitar these days with $1,500. Unfortunately, Joe, I'm sorry, we're not getting your guitar fixed. It isn't worth it. We'll just have to get you a new one, buddy. However, the good news here is that this guitar is in fully playing order. We are going to go back in time and I'm gonna let Alistair explain what he did to get this guitar back into playing shape. What had happened was that the neck angle was a little shallow. Um, on on some of these guitars, either they they move over time or or they were adjusted in a specific way. This one had much too high action. The saddle was kind of you know where we wanted it, but the the action wasn't great. And they designed these necks so you can actually unbolt them, pull them off, and install different shims to adjust the neck angle. I pulled it and adjusted it that way and uh, kind of got what I think is the optimal acoustic action. Lowered the nut a little bit, um, kind of dialed it in there. Um, all these things are a little bit subjective and everyone has their own personal preferences, but... Yeah, dude, that actually looks way it's lower a, than it's it was. It's a lot lower than it Oh was, man, yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to try this thing. 
tailors are really convenient that way. You can do a pretty inexpensive reset, whereas like a Martin, it's hundreds of dollars to pull the neck because it's a glued on dovetail. Um, and so it can be kind of a, a pretty quick little process there if you have the right parts. Nice. Well, awesome. So I guess, yeah, these tailors are basically built to be wrenched on and exactly, yeah. that's really cool. I'm really glad I got a tailor. <laughs> I'm really, really, really happy that Alistair was able to reset the neck, bring the action to a point where this guitar is playable, and now it just plays like butter. It's just so nice to play this guitar now because I don't have to push very hard on the frets, it doesn't buzz either. So there's a, a fine balance between getting the strings low enough to where you don't have to push too hard to play and keeping them high enough so that when you push on a fret, then it doesn't buzz on another fret further down the neck. So in this case, Perfect. He just nailed it on this and it's so easy to play. It's just so nice. <laughs> I'm gonna get a lot of enjoyment out of this guys. I'm so excited. You guys will be seeing this guitar on the channel in the future. This is probably the nicest guitar I own at this point, even over my vintage Les Paul. So um, thank you again, Alistair, and thank you guys for watching this video. To close, I wanna remind you guys that if you want cool guitars, you wanna be able to work on your guitars or get your guitars worked on, you gotta make that bread. And if you want to make that bread and be able to play music, you got to work smart. Peace out. Rock on.